Hello, YouTube land, Mr. Bill Poker fans. We're back with a second episode of Mr. Bill and Son with a detailed hand analysis. So, this is a hand that I played in the Wednesday Night Poker League. It was early in the tournament. The blinds were still small. 1,500, right? Mm -hmm. But this was a really big hand for Billy, who happened to go on. And let's say he just did very well in the tournament, correct? Welcome to the zoo. Come on in, come on through. Would you like to feed the monkeys? Would you like to give them food? I would like to give to you some monkey pee, some monkey poo. But you have to understand, some monkeys see and some monkeys do. Come on in, come on through. So, a little bit of background information. I got to the tournament a little bit late, like seven minutes late or so, and I folded about every hand for the first two orbits. So this is the second hand that I played in the tournament. The first hand, the guy, Pat, actually made a comment about how I was playing so tight. Yeah, so. Pat is a player who is a little bit sticky. That's who Billy played this hand against. Okay. Blinds are 50 and 100. It folded around to me on the button, and I had king-queen offsuit. Uh, so I raised the 300 and Pat called, small blind folded. So I think obviously it's pre-flop, pretty standard. Pat is uh, gonna defend. He has nine something, you find out it in the video. Nine, I don't know what, but uh, nine, ten, I think pretty eight, standard, nine, something, something like that, okay. So there was 650 in the pot. The flop was queen of clubs, jack of clubs, nine of diamonds. So I made a continuation bet for 500 and he called. Yeah, he checked first and then Billy continuation bet. I think that all of these lines are absolutely standard. Um, and Billy and I disagree a little bit. So um, I say that Pat can't have pocket queens or pocket jacks here because he didn't not, not, he didn't raise pre-flop and then he doesn't raise here. Now, do you think after the flop? He doesn't have very many combinations, but that doesn't mean he didn't just flat call with it. He okay. can sometimes show up with that. I think he has every combination of 10 that he ever has because he's open-ended there. And he has lots of combo draws with... He has any pair. Flushes any and a pair. Lots of combo draws. So the turn comes the two of hearts. Complete blank. I think I'm still ahead. And there was 1650 in the pot. So I bet 700. And he called. Again, pretty standard. Although I would have liked to have seen Billy's bet sizing be a little bit bigger here so he bet 700 into eight uh, 1650 even a half pot would have been 825 uh, i would have liked to have seen nine or 950 but it's not horrible i was trying to keep the draws in keep the smaller pairs in so. yeah although you only have one pair so uh he has lots of draws he might have he could have almost 50 percent equity so, so i'd like to see the sizing be a little bit bigger but that's okay when he just calls here I pretty much rule out any two pair, any sets, and yeah. So he's one pair, he's draws. Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, once that there's, I actually thought that after the flop. When there's two clubs on the flop and a straight that comes in, a possible straight on the board, I think he would have bet, he would have raised all of his sets there. So when he doesn't do it on the turn two, I think absolutely he doesn't have sets. Now you have lots of sets in your range. At I least have, you have queens my and range jacks. Is uncapped. Yeah, and you, I could have king ten, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket nines. Yeah, and you could also have nut flush draw. You could have any of the flush draws. Now Pat can also have flush draws. He can be open ended. He but he never has the uh, two pair or sets. We don't think. Mm -hmm. So. The river. The, river. the river! Now the river. The river comes with the wettest card in the deck, the nine of clubs. There's 3,000 in the pot, and he leads into me for 1,800. Okay, when he leads into you for 1,800, when the nine comes, what do you potentially put him on? Well, since we t I, 
I thought he has zero full houses in his range. He might have 9, 10, ace, 9, any flushes. He could have flushes. He could have a 9, a naked 9, right? Not not a full house, we don't think, yeah. right? So that's what I put him on when he does this. Or a bluff, but I don't think he's ever bluffed. Yeah, I don't think he's He has a good hand, but he doesn't have a full house, right? All right. So what do you do? I thought about it for... A long time while. I was watching the hand and then I decided there's no way I'm ever ahead here so I just calling is out is not an option so, so you have to either fold or, or raise. raise okay so I ended up raising to 4500 because his range is capped and he thinks I'm a tight player and if I raise I don't think he can comfortably call with anything really yeah the only thing he would you have to worry about is will he call with the nut flush or even a big flush that's really the only thing right mm -hmm. anyhow I, I think he still might even fold those because mm -hmm. I have all the full houses yes you do and he had he didn't have any right mm -hmm. um, I guess he had I guess he could have had quad nines yeah that's the only hand that and and but really you're trying to fold out flushes and obviously fold out three of a kind because you can't beat that with your two pair mm -hmm. with a king kicker, right? So let's talk about the size. So 1800 and you bet 4500. So you're basically making it two and a half times what his bet was. Uh, yeah, this was still early in the tournament so we started with 10,000 so I thought pretty much any raise over 2x was gonna get the job done. I didn't need to go 3x or anything. I like the sizing. I think the sizing is very good. It certainly looks like you're trying to get value out of a full house, but get good value instead of little chintzy mm -hmm. value, right? So I like the sizing. I think if you, I think Pat smells it out if you bet a whole lot more and you don't want to bet less because then he might call with his three nines. Mm -hmm. So I really like the sizing. All right, so you used a 4,500. What does Pat do? He I thought he about tanks. it for a while. Yeah. Like for three or four minutes he tanked. Uh, and then he ended up folding, so got what I wanted. Did and he? Then, did he say, "Show me your cards" or anything like that? He, I'm about ninety percent sure he had a nine. Well, he showed a nine, didn't he? He didn't show a nine. He, but he said, said he, he had, had a nine. nine. Okay, okay. I was standing there watching the hand, and Pat tanked forever. It was a long, long time. So, so I think it was ten nine, ace nine, eight nine, something like that. Something like that. So. An excellent play, Billy. I don't think a lot of players would have thought that through early in the tournament and risked so many chips early on, but it was a great play, and it propelled Billy. Billy, tell him how you did in the tournament. I ended up winning the tournament, so. Little punk kid, 20 years <laughs> old, playing with all us guys that are playing in the World Series of Poker, and played at WPT, all that kind of stuff, and Billy ended up winning the tournament. There's a... Uh, uh, we're doing a vlog where Billy is going to be the star of the vlog for winning the tournament. So make sure you guys watch that one. So let us know what you think about the whole hand pretty much. We're always trying to learn, so any comments? or Yeah, what do you guys think about the bet sizing on the turn, uh, bet sizing on the river? What do you think of Billy's logic? Yeah. I thought it was very, very good. So, all right. So leave your comments or questions below. And we'll try to answer that. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you guys next time. Welcome to the zoo. Come on in, come on through. Would you like to feed the monkeys? Would you like to give them food?